Another way to change or challenge our thoughts is by testing them. For those of us who struggle with anxiety, this type of technique can be especially helpful because we're actually working with our brain <laughs> because our fear center in the brain called the amygdala actually learns through experiences. So as we kind of test or challenge our thoughts through the technique that we're going to go through today, we're actually working with our brain rather than constantly struggling or fighting with all of those anxious thoughts. And if you have ever heard of exposure therapy, this is the foundational belief behind how exposure therapy works. The basic concept of reality testing is to help us distinguish between our internal world, our self-talk, our perceptions, beliefs, those types of things, from our external world, which is basically just what's actually happening around us. This practice helps us to zoom out from our internal world so we can more easily identify or acknowledge when our thoughts are not being super helpful for us. Reality testing is especially helpful if we find ourselves assuming that bad things are going to happen or if we're predicting maybe how others are going to respond to us, aka if we are jumping to conclusions. This type of thought pattern actually happens quite quite a lot for those of us with anxiety, which makes sense, right? Anxiety likes to be prepared, so it thinks of future scenarios, it thinks of all of the things that could go wrong because it wants to be prepared so it can protect us from any sort of harm. So when we practice reality testing, we are acknowledging that our thoughts are not being super helpful for us, and we test those thoughts through our actions. So in the practice of reality testing, we are actually identifying what we think is going to happen, and then we go through with whatever the situation might be, and we compare what we thought was going to happen with what actually happened. Let's go through all of the steps of what reality testing could look like with an example so you have a pretty good idea of how this could be practiced in your own life. Step one is to write down the unhelpful thought or this expectation of what you think is going to happen. So for this example, let's say the unhelpful thought or the unhelpful expectation is that my friend just don't like hanging out with me. Step two is to come up with a way to test this thought or test this expectation out. So for this step, let's plan on having you ask one of your friends to hang out this coming weekend. So once you've planned that out, then you kind of make a prediction of what this experiment or this test is going to look like and what it's going to feel like as well. So for this example, maybe you think something like, they're gonna say no and I'm gonna feel hurt and rejected. Step four is just going through with this experiment. You ask your friend to hang out and we'll just kind of watch it play out. Step five actually happens after we go through with the experiment. We reflect back on it and we write down what actually happened and how we felt. Some examples of what this could look like, there's a million different possibilities of outcomes, right? So just some examples for this particular situation could be that they say yes and they're super excited and you make a plan for this coming weekend. Another possibility is that they say no, but they're really bummed. They wish that they could hang out with you, but they have a family obligation, so they want to reschedule. You know what? Another possibility is that maybe they say no. Maybe they're not actually super thrilled to be asked to hang out. And maybe that says something about the friendship itself. Maybe you guys just aren't driving together or they're not a great fit for friendship for you. And that's okay too. You'll find your people in time. And it's okay if not everybody is thrilled to hang out with you. Not everyone is everyone else's cup of tea. Step six is reflecting on the experiment, the outcome, your thoughts, how you felt, everything. So you can take in all of this new evidence, compare it maybe to what those predictions were. And going through that process kind of helps the brain to rewire itself and to think of alternative possibilities and just help us see that maybe our first thought, our worst case scenarios, or our unhelpful expectations or predictions maybe aren't so true and that that's okay that we can go through with these experiments or testing situations and acknowledge that there's maybe more to the story than we initially thought there really are so many different possibilities or outcomes to any situation and for some reason our brains decide that 
the possibilities or outcomes that it predicts or that it conjures are the only possibilities when in reality that's just not the case. So when we can test our thoughts in this way, we are kind of doing two things. We are actively teaching the amygdala that we can do these things even if we're afraid of them and we're teaching it that we can still remain safe even if we're feeling a little bit of anxiety through these difficult situations. And two, we're kind of going through this process of rewiring the brain, which is also called a cognitive restructuring. We are basically forcing our brain to acknowledge that there are other possibilities out there other than those automatic thoughts that just initially come to mind. Okay, so that is reality testing in a nutshell. Drop me a note down in the comments below to let me know how you practice this technique and whatever you may have noticed. What were those predictions and how do they differ from what actually happened? I'll see you next time.